Hello and welcome to Long Beach Lens. I'm your host, Derek J. Simpson, Executive Director of the Long Beach Community Action Partnership. Today, we've invited the candidates running for City Council District 5. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Rich Dines and Ms. Stacy Mungo. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So my first question, you guys, as I was looking at how could I best uh, set the stage for uh, this particular uh, episode was to look back at articles in the paper and look at the results of the election. And what struck me was 47.9% voted for you, Councilwoman. Uh, Mr. Dines got 29.4, uh, and a collectively 52%, 52.1% voted, you know, for, or for other than the incumbent. I'll start with you with this particular question and ask, when you see the numbers, what does that say to you and the messaging from the constituents of your district? I think it says that I'm, I'm human. And over the last four years, um, there's been a lot of votes I've had to take that are very tough. Mm -hmm. And there's always people on, on both sides. And we're a very diverse city and a very diverse district. Mm -hmm. And I know that, th that I'm not a politician. And I don't tell people what they want to hear. I'm a neighbor whose neighbors asked me to run for city council. And while I had local government budget experience, I really didn't have the experience at the dais to know and understand how to, at first, mm -hmm. negotiate with my colleagues to get everything the 5th District needed. And it had been a good 20 years since we'd had the proper investment in our infrastructure. And one of the reasons I ran is for the same reasons that some of the 5th District residents are really upset, which was our streets needed to be repaired. Our parks were degraded. And being the biggest district, it was just too long that the amount of money the 5th District was getting was just, just far too little. And mm -hmm. so it takes time to make those changes, especially in a fiscally appropriate way. It's easy to just borrow money to pay for things that we need, but we felt, this current city council, that we're all really young and we're gonna live here our whole life and we don't wanna spend away our future. So we had to make some really tough decisions. And making tough decisions means that not everyone's always gonna be happy. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to say to those individuals, well, I'll get it for you next year. But I, I would rather be honest and say, I don't know when we'll have the time or the funding to get to those things, but they are a priority. And so one at a time, we're marking them off the list, but it's a long list and local government is slow. And okay. I am as frustrated as they probably are. Mr. Dines, what about you? What do you think when you see the numbers? Well, when we look at the numbers and um, we see that more than half the voters voted against the incumbent, I, I think it uh, shows that the, uh, the district wants change and they're unhappy with the direction that we're going in now. And um, I look at why I didn't receive 50%. Um, there was a third candidate, a, a very competent, well-liked Democrat, Corliss Lee, who shared uh, my views on the uh, land use element issue or the density issue that would impact the 5th district. And this seemed to be, during the primary, the one issue that really stood out. And as the councilwoman suggests, there are a lot of issues that impact the district that are very important to people, such as maintaining our parks, such as fixing our streets, such as having the right amount of public safety. Um, the major challenges that, that we face with that are the lack of fiscal responsibility at downtown. I think that was one of the driving forces why the voters in the 5th district are asking for change today. So the greatest challenges and opportunities sure. uh, for District 5. So when I first was asked by my neighbors to run, we sat down and talked through what are our three top priorities. Public safety. Um, mm -hmm. We were at a time where crime was creeping up and um, not crime creeping up the way you hear it on Facebook or Nextdoor, but actual crime FBI statistics were showing that we were having a spike. And for that, we had to really look at what, what are the causes and, and what are the um, solutions. Some of those solutions were more police on the streets. And so we had to make some tough decisions and come together and we've um, increased our staffing of the police department significantly. Many know that I'm a reserve deputy sheriff at the Lakewood station and I can really, really identify with some of our, our beat officers who are working back-to-back -back shifts, the overtime was long, and we can't have our officers out there when they're tired. We need to be in a position where officers can choose to take overtime, um, not where we're doing order ins. And so we really had to make a large investment in hiring um, additional police officers. And at this time in our, our country, hiring police officers is a very difficult thing to do. Um, Sheriff Jim McDonald was just talking about it yesterday. Recruitment is tough and we are doing our best, and we in Long Beach have been very successful in um, hiring two additional classes. 
Um, additionally, when we ran, we talked a lot about our parks and our infrastructure and our parks. Um, we've worked really hard and I'm very fortunate to announce we have a million dollar grant for the duck pond. We still need more. The, the duck pond revision will cost more than a million dollars, but we're very hopeful of the next two grants that are coming in. Those are big things. And then to fill in those gaps, I have a, a large background in nonprofit. I've served on the YMCA board, the Junior League board, all, all these different nonprofit groups. And we were able to reach out and partner with our large corporate um, entities in the fifth, Boeing and Scan and a few others. And they've done all day volunteer days to help us. So El Dorado Senior Center has been repainted and the archery range fence has been rebuilt. And we've done all those things without spending a dollar. Mm -hmm. And so we've really had to get creative. And the only way to do those things is when you bring everyone to the table. And I'm really thankful for all the supporters. And I only look forward to growing the number of people that are involved in making those things happen. Good. Mr. Dines, what are your thoughts? Well, I do believe that uh, one of the biggest challenges we face right now is uh, increase in violent crime, which has actually skyrocketed about 37 percent in the last four years, according to the Long Beach Police Department's um, statistics. Uh, but here, here's the real problem. We had over 950 sworn officers, and today when you look at the amount of officers actually on the streets, not riding Metro Blue Line collecting overtime, not in the Port Division, but actually on the streets, we barely have 750 sworn officers. Mm. So uh, we really do need to reprioritize public safety. And it's, uh, uh, if you look at the fiscal responsibility downtown or lack thereof, you know, the decision by the city council to invest $1.4 billion over the next 40 years into a new civic plaza, that is really making it difficult for us to make the investments in public safety, investments in our parks, and investments in our streets and sidewalks. So it's a very big challenge. So the, the fiscal responsibility um, the, or the lack of fiscal responsibility at City Hall has an impact on every district, but I think that's one of the biggest challenges we face in the 5th District is lack of funding. Derek, can I answer the question about sure, Civic Center? Because you There's a lot of misinformation about that. Yeah. So the Civic Center, many know I teach at USC, I'm an educator and I teach in the master's program. And um, the Civic Center Plaza is actually a national best standard, a best practice for how to finance through maintenance funds um, a revolution, quite honestly, of our downtown area. The median income of downtown has gone up, the development of downtown has gone up, which has in turn brought in additional property tax revenue, which is then being invested in streets and sidewalks and trees and police officers. But if you take that 1.4 billion and you divide it out over the 30 years, the amount the taxpayers of Long Beach are paying for a new top of the line civic center, city hall, and amazing library, which we needed so badly. Um, it's actually almost the exact same amount per year that we would have paid in maintenance and um, infrastructure requirement improvements for the civic center that we have today. And so without that investment, um, we wouldn't be seeing the revolution downtown. And, and while um, there's a section of the city that's experiencing some violent crime, increases, the 40-year decline in violent crime and specifically the significant decline in both um, local crime, petty crime, and violent crime in the east side is down. And those statistics are on the website and updated regularly. Year to date, year over year even, not even just saying four years, but you can say the four-year statistic and the year over year statistics, crime is down in both categories and Chief Luna will attest to that. Mr. Dines, closing thoughts so we can move on to the next Closing question. thought on the $1.4 billion uh, Civic Plaza. So there was always a better way. And uh, in 2013, I actually did present uh, from the Harbor Commission the idea that the port and city could work together on a new Civic Plaza. This would have put a $1 billion less burden on the taxpayers of Long Beach with all the benefit that the councilwoman talks about. So uh, we still have to, uh, uh, regardless of whether uh, we can argue whether there's going to be a benefit or not, you still have a bill to pay, $1.4 billion over the next 40 years. We ended up giving away jobs for the people that currently maintain our new city hall. And we still are unable to fund uh, the correct amount of public safety officers, fix our streets and sidewalks. And if you've been to El Dorado Park lately, take a few pictures. Uh, it's in total disrepair right now. So we are about, we're coming close to our break. Real quick, the question is, and I'd like a concise answer on this one, why is your leadership most effective in addressing the needs of District 5? I'm going to stay with you, and then we'll close out with you. Mr. Dines, why is your leadership? Thank you very much for the question. 
Uh, my leadership, uh, I think, is best for District 5 because I have a record of actually listening to the community, not fighting with the community. So you understand what the community wants when you work closely with the community instead of making decisions that the community spends all their time fighting against, like the land use element and the density, like uh, an international airport, like putting up bollards on Studebaker, like in making large investments into city halls and, and libraries that could have been done uh, for le much less money so we can prioritize on public safety, fixing our streets and sidewalks, maintaining our parks. But that's what the 5th District really wants. Stacy, For 20 years I've been involved in this community from the YMCA to any other nonprofit and it's easy for people to say that they, ha they know a better way but I've been to those community meetings even in Mr. Dine's own neighborhood and worked with them through the solutions and there always seem to be easy solutions but um, it seems that Mr. Dines continues to want to put issues of the past and before my administration on, on, on me and around my neck and that's unfortunate. I really wanted to run a clean and honest campaign and so one of the things that I would say is I have a track record. I'm in the neighborhoods. I'm in the community and that's why there's often turmoil because I'm open to serious dialogues. I don't give people um, information that they want to hear. I'm open and honest about the process. I'm transparent. More than 12,000 people have signed up for my newsletter since being elected. And that's a way that I can continue to get out information so that we together can make those decisions. Um, I have a very open door policy. I talk to neighbors on the phone every day. And I'm always listening for the opportunities to sit down and have a real open dialogue. Um, I think it says it best when someone else talks about your leadership. And I think that um, Robert Fox, the, the executive director of the Council of Neighborhood Associations, said it best. He said of the nine council districts and the LUE process, I'm the one who had the most outreach, the most community engagement, the most mm -hmm. dialogue, because I really want solid answers. And I know that I alone don't have those answers. We get the best answers when we all come together and we compromise to find a solution. And the fifth district got everything it wanted in the LUE. We're at our break, so we're going to hold it there. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we will continue our conversation with Mr. Rich Dines and Ms. Stacy Mungo. Stay tuned for more of Long Beach Lens.
Simpson. We are here with the candidates running for City Council District 5, Mr. Rich Dines and Ms. Stacy Mungo. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like to do is come back with this question that, yes, you're running uh, for your district, but you're also going to be a leader among leaders. Uh, explain to us uh, how you will demonstrate leadership for a greater good, how you've been doing so, and how you will do so, sir. Starting with me? Yes. Yeah. Well, I think that that's been the um, most promising component of this city council. Um, I am endorsed by every single member of the Long Beach City Council and the mayor. I'm also endorsed by um, some of the colleagues of, um, I'm supported by some of the, the colleagues from the port, which has been great. Um, and many of our commissioners in parks and other areas across, across the city. And I think that um, though we don't always agree on everything, working together has been um, a pleasure and we have made some great strides. Uh, many, many talk about the success we had as a community in the 5th District in really changing the way mm -hmm. that street repair is, is prioritized and that it is now by need and considering the 5th District has so much more need than everyone else, we're gonna be looking at significant increases in street repair. Um, back just five years ago, we would have maybe four to six streets repaired in each and every district, but the 5th District in the last two years has had 150 streets repaired and from here forward, no matter what revenue streams are coming in, it will be done by need. And, and that can't be done unless you have dialogue because it's hard when you have certain programs in the fifth and you have maybe different programs in the first or the seventh or the ninth and you have to talk about what, what makes sense and where's the equity of our city. Right. And um, we all really get along and I think that that's important because we can have really strong dialogue and really be fierce with one another and at the end of the day, know that we're gonna do what's in the best interest of Long Beach. So Mr. Dines, that would be the environment that you would be walking into. What are your thoughts when you think about working with colleagues? Because I know you've been in a situation similar to this before where you've been the new guy coming in. And I'm, I'm very proud of my record of creating great policy at the Port of Long Beach uh, with my colleagues there. It's about collaboration right. and it's about, it's, a, it's also about compromise. And so, uh, and as um, the councilwoman knows, uh, there has to be some compromise on city council because you do have nine different districts. I'm very proud to have the support of Congressman Alan Lowenthal, Supervisor Janice Hahn, and Assemblymember Patrick O'Donnell, all of which have served on city council and support my campaign. They believe I'm the best candidate. They can come to Long Beach City Council and work with the, within the body of nine to do the work that's in the best interest of the entire city and get the best, get, address the needs of your individual district. Staying with you, we're going to do a rapid fire here. Livable wage jobs, affordable housing, two major concerns. How would you address those if you were on council and then we'll come to Stacey Mungo? Well first, thank you for that question. Living wage jobs, uh, this was a center focus of mine at the Port of Long Beach where we approved 3.75 billion dollars in project labor agreements providing local living wage jobs. And I think that's very important because people shouldn't have to commute an hour or two to find a good job. They should be able to find a job in the town they live in. Uh, we are not a very business friendly city. We have the, one of the highest sales taxes uh, rates in the country, tied with Chicago at 10.25%. Uh, $400 for a business license, way too much. We need to reduce the cost of business license to attract more small businesses coming into Long Beach. And with affordable housing, I think what we really need to do is separate affordable housing from what we would call low income housing, because they're two different things. Low income housing being part of a project of a, that will have a, a market rate attached to it. But I think low income, um, sorry, affordable housing, we should look at as being uh, separate projects um, that should have uh, perhaps more innovative construction ideas like um, converting shipping containers. I've been working on uh, mm -hmm. housing for the homeless on smaller shipping containers, but I believe a studio loft style living could be created with very affordable shipping containers that um, you wouldn't see the higher rents and higher mortgages, but you would, you would abs I absolutely believe that we have a real future uh, in creating affordable housing within Long Beach. Councilman. Thank you. Um, in the last five years, Long Beach has finally hit the record low of unemployment in the history of recording unemployment in the city of Long Beach. And I think that that record shows that this council, and specifically me and the Economic Development Committee and the Economic Development Commission, we've laid out a, bl a blueprint um, 
Mr. Dines may not be aware that we actually have a business license refund program. So you actually, there are certain laws and regulations about how development services works. And so when we sat down and found out what options are available, any new business that opens in Long Beach or grows in Long Beach can have up to two years of business licenses refunded. And those are programs that have been very successful. In my district alone, we've brought in over 500 new businesses in four years. And so actually with 752 new businesses in our most recent count. Um, and that's not even a, attesting to the great successes we're having at Douglas Park and Long Beach Exchange, which will be opening shortly. Mm -hmm. Those businesses li haven't even pulled their licenses yet, and that's going to be another 50 to 70. Um, the area accounts for almost 5,000 new jobs. And people don't always realize that a lot of those jobs aren't big companies. While Mercedes-Benz came in before I was um, elected, it, it actually, for that large footprint, has a few amount of jobs. It's actually contributing to the hotel, ta hotel taxes of the area because it's a regional training center. Mm -hmm. But the jobs that I talk about are the jobs where we sit down with the owner of Subway and say, you have a successful franchise, would you like to open another? And now he opened a yogurt land. And that's six jobs plus six jobs plus six jobs. Because 70% of the jobs in this city are made by small business owners who mm -hmm. really work one-on-one. -on -one. And so I've really concentrated on our business corridors and our business corridor improvement programs. Norseway Business Improvement Program, the Spring Street Business Association raised over $70,000 for charity last year and came together and started working together. Um, we also talk a little bit about the PLA. While the port passed an, a PLA that was okay, the city of Long Beach took it a step further and made it local zip codes. Not LA County, Orange County region, but really, really honed in. And you and I have worked together from the Pastors Council mm -hmm. to make it even more specific to Long Beach residents. Yeah, and local means local for Long Beach, and so yeah. that's important that we keep that straight. Now, you want to ask a, a rebut to that, yes? I, I would rebut that when you're talking about port project labor agreements, the uh -huh. value is $3.75 billion. Okay. So the city's PLA, the city five-year PLA, mm -hmm. has a value of $140 million. Mm -hmm. And we have done everything we can, or did, I did everything I could as a harbor commissioner to ensure it was Long Beach jobs created. So yes, it's LA Orange County, but we did work very, very diligently to ensure that as many Long Beach jobs were created in 90800 zip codes. And just to get the specifics, yeah. many of those port projects are federally funded and federally funded programs don't qualify within the PLA, but yeah. appreciate the opportunity. So we've got five minutes and a lot to cover, of right? Of course. I want to ask a quick question about uh, Everyone Home Task Force that the mayor has spoken about and President Jane Conley has talked about. Homelessness is a big issue in our community. We see it all over the city, not yeah. just in one area. So, Mr. Dines, when you think about the Everyone Home Task Force and homelessness, what would be your strategy to help us as a community address that in a very equitable way? Well, first let me say, um, so this is a, a brand new task force. It was introduced, uh, created a couple weeks ago. I recognize there's a lot of um, top city leaders that have agreed to uh, participate in the task force. So I appreciate um, the hard work they're, they're going to be undertaking. Um, I completely support um, finding a, a solution to our homelessness crisis. Um, I think to make a problem worse, the best thing to do is ignore it. And if you look back only one year, when we were just counting, uh, we, we said that our homeless counts were down 21%. Nobody really believes that. We're in a crisis. So everyone needs to roll up their sleeves, get to work. We need to support this task force. I, I am hopeful that they come up with some great ideas. I myself have been working with a local contractor for the last three years on how to address housing homeless people. Mm -hmm. um, but we really, really need to come together as an entire community and offer the support. A holistic solution. I would agree with that wholeheartedly. And your answer to that as well? I'm just so surprised that doing nothing is bringing $14.3 million to the city. Um, Councilmember Al Austin and Councilman Susie Price and I worked really hard um, with our grants development team. And in the last three years, Two years ago, we brought in 14.3 million and almost every one of those grants has been renewed last year. Um, Long Beach is actually on the national stage known as one of the best cities in America in how it has handled homelessness. We were recognized by um, President Obama for being the first or second, we both reported on the same day, city in America to have provided a home to any veteran who was willing to take it. Um, I personally have worked with um, our Homeless Services Center 
and um, a, a gentleman who um, had really fallen on hard times and lost his job, Maurice, we helped him work through the process and got him a home, a permanent home for him and his kids. Mm -hmm. um, our, our programs are, are remarkable and there are beds available. And our um, heart team is a national standard and it's being followed across the country. Arizona, Texas, and um, Colorado are all coming out and visiting and taking research from our, our projects. Mm -hmm. Homelessness is a regional issue and we are working very hard with not only our Long Beach resources, because we do have our own health department, our own social workers, but also with our regional partners to, to come up with regional solutions. So um, it, I'm really looking forward to the task force, and I know that we've grown so many programs and they're so close together, we really need to hand it over to the community in a meaningful way and continue to support it financially and with the great policies that the council has come together and revised. Believe it or not, we're almost out of time, and I want to give you both an opportunity to make closing statements. Mr. Dines, I'd like to start with you, whether it be in rebuttal or just to surmise what your uh, platform is. Uh, thank you. Uh, very brief closing statement. I would like to just say that uh, the 5th District deserves a representative that will be fiscally responsible, that will reprioritize public safety, fixing our streets, maintaining our parks. I have a strong record of fiscal responsibility. On April 10th, the voters, more than half the voters of the 5th District decided they wanted change. So the opportunity is before us now. On June 5th, I asked the voters of the 5th District to vote for me, bring the change and uh, fiscal responsibility back to City Hall. And for more information, please visit my website at richsteins.com or follow me on Facebook, Rich Steins for Long Beach. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Manga. Thank you, Derek, for hosting this. Um, sure. I really appreciate you and all the work you do in the community. I really appreciate the opportunity to continue to serve. Um, over the last four years, I've learned a lot, and we've come together as a community, and I look forward to the opportunity to continue. When I, when I was elected, I was told, the last two years of your first term, you're gonna have huge deficits. And each of those years, we've made the tough decisions in advance, tightened our belts, and made sure that we did not enter either of those years with um, deficits. Mm -hmm. Also, we revised all the fiscal policies of the city. There were some policies that hadn't been looked at in quite a while and really needed revision because they weren't the responsible way to run a city government. I'm really proud of the work we've done. I really appreciate those who've come together and been very supportive. Um, I will continue to hear those who are open to sharing their thoughts and mentorship with me. And I look forward to, on uh, June 5th, for the 5th District to come out and support me, Stacy Mungo for Long Beach City Council. And I, I just want to close in thanking all of my colleagues on the Long Beach City Council for an amazing first four years and for each and every one of their endorsements. Well, thank you both for, for your candid responses and for your desire to lead and serve our community. Uh, we're at the end of time for this show, but not at the end of questions and answers that I'm sure you could both provide. I'd like to thank Mr. Rich Dines and Ms. Stacy Mungo for joining us on today's show. Be sure to follow PatNet TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for the latest updates. We also welcome your comments and thoughts regarding the show as we strive to make Long Beach Lands a favorite source of local news, information, and entertainment. This show has been brought to you with support from the Long Beach Community Action Partnership. Thank you for watching Long Beach Lens, and remember to vote on June 5th.